Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. We're in our spring quarter of Sunday School Lessons, and the title of this quarter study is God Frees and Redeems. This quarter uses the lens of liberation and Christian freedom to examine and experience the nature of God who acts to deliver and free people in different situations. We're in Unit 3 entitled Liberating Letters, which contains five lessons based on the letters to the Romans and Galatians that explore Paul's understanding of the radical nature of Christian freedom. The final lesson in the unit focuses on the fruit of the Spirit emanating from Christian freedom. In this week's lesson, we will see why it is so important to stay connected with Jesus and his teachings and to avoid being lured away by false teachings. Get your Sunday School book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, May the 22nd, is Freed to Love, and this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School commentary is The Nature of Christian Freedom. The background scripture is Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 15 and the print passage is also Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 15. The key verse in this week's lesson is the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself and that's Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 the new international version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, what is it that Paul continues to insist that the Galatian congregation continue to do? Question number two, what was Paul's concern about circumcision? And question number three, what does true freedom in Christ mean? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. Sometime after Paul's departure from Galatia, his converts were thrown into confusion by unnamed preachers who persuaded them to consider a different gospel. Paul considered the message of these false teachers to be not just a perversion of his gospel, but really no gospel at all. A group of Christians known as Judaizers was preaching a gospel of legalism rather than a gospel of grace. Judaizers were a group of Jewish Christians, including some of non-Jewish origins, who regarded the Old Testament law as still binding and necessary for salvation. Paul was astonished. He was perplexed and concerned about what they were hearing. Paul wrote a letter to the Galatian churches concerning this matter. Paul insisted in his letter that no mark in the Galatians' flesh could perfect what the Spirit had already done. Christ had freed them from their old lives of slavery. Paul also writes that believers should display godly love to one another. The outward evidence of the Spirit's work in the believer's heart is manifested in the ability to choose well and make godly decisions that benefit the whole body of Christ and to glorify God. In chapters 5 and 6, Paul addresses the issues of circumcision explicitly warning the Galatians of the dire consequences of following the teaching of the teachers and uh, preachers and missionaries who had come to Galatia 
after Paul's departure. He then offered them an alternative vision for a community that lives in love and not by rules. The text for this week's lesson deals with living out the gospel by walking in the spirit. The lessons in unit three, liberating letters, challenge believers to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. In this week's lesson, Paul wanted the Christians in Galatia to stay committed to their choice of living for Jesus Christ. Paul's main purpose in writing the letter to the Galatians was to repeat and clarify the true nature of the gospel. Believers are justified, made righteous and sanctified, made more like Christ through faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Christian life is described as a life apart from the law. Judaizers were teaching that it was necessary for the Galatian Christians to submit to physical circumcision in order to be accepted to God. Circumcision would mean the surrender of that freedom. They did not need to become Jews in order to gain full standing as children of Abraham. Faith in Christ must be faith in Christ alone and nothing else. In fact, Paul explained that to begin to follow the law cuts one off from Christ because it is asking God to judge us by our own works and not by Christ's. Paul's argument was against adding any part of the law of Moses as necessary for salvation through Jesus Christ. The lesson aims for this week are discern the differences between legalism and the freedom that comes with responsibility. The next lesson aim is experience freedom as trusting in the work of Christ rather than your own efforts for salvation. And the third lesson aim, choose a life of freedom in Christ that is guided by serving and loving others with humility. As we continue our glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are three outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first outline is Righteous by Faith, and that's Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. The second lesson outline is Reap by Faith, and that's Galatians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. And the third lesson outline is Renounce by Faith. And that's Galatians chapter 5, verses 11 through 15. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, Righteous by Faith. This week's lesson opens with a clarion call to stand fast in the freedom won by Christ. Paul declared that Christ was the great liberator who sets believers free from bondage. Verse 1 reads, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Paul continues to insist in this opening verse that the Galatians be free of the constraints of the Jewish law. He commands them to stand firm in their newfound freedom. If we, like the Galatians, having been set free in Jesus, choose to entangle ourselves with laws about circumcision, sacrifices, holy days, or uh, prayers facing east toward Jerusalem and the like, then we, too, risk a return to bondage. Paul urged the Galatians not to let any religious person take their freedom from them by subjecting them to another bondage. Key point number one, Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Verse two reads, mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, 
Christ will be of no value to you all. The Galatians were considering being circumcised. It was not that the Apostle Paul condemned circumcision in itself, but he was opposed to the Judaistic theology, which insisted that circumcision was necessary for salvation. To counteract the teachings of those who had come to Galatia after his departure, Paul declared that circumcision negates any benefit the Galatians might have about uh, receiving Christ or might have received from Christ. Verse three reads, again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Paul reminds them in verse three that circumcision creates an obligation to obey the whole law. Verse four reads, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. If the Galatians accepted circumcision as necessary for salvation, they would be leaving the grace system for the Mosaic law system. Trying to save ourselves by keeping all of God's laws only separates us from God. Key point number two, no amount of work, discipline, or moral behavior can save us. If a person were counting on with uh, finding favor with God by being circumcised, he would also have to obey the rest of the law completely. We are not saved by keeping the law. The way of the law makes salvation dependent on human achievement. For them to seek covenant membership by undergoing circumcision was a tragic rejection of God's grace in Christ. God calls every believer to holiness and purity, but salvation is not earned by what one does or does not do. Rather, one is saved because of what God has done for the believer through Jesus Christ. One must either accept the whole of the law or receive the grace of God. As Paul states in verse four, those who choose the law forfeit, forfeit God's gift of grace, alienating Christ and his offer of salvation. Verse five reads, for through the spirit, we eagerly await by faith, the righteousness for which we hope. The second outline, Reap by faith. Verse six reads, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Paul's concern about circumcision was only about its being imposed on Gentiles as a spiritual demand. Key point number one, we are saved by faith and not by works. Paul now clearly states in verse six that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters with respect to status in God's family, but faith that is genuine does work itself out through love. Verse seven reads, you are running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? They had begun running their race well, but someone had cut in on them, causing them to break stride or pace and stumble. Verse eight reads, that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Paul is asking, who told you this? It certainly isn't God. This false teaching did not originate from God. They were now being seduced by other voices into following a false gospel. Verse nine reads, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. It takes only one person to infect all the others. Key point number two, even one small deviation from the truth can be detrimental 
The point is that believers must always be watchful and prayerful, lest a false doctrine spread throughout the congregation. In essence, what Paul was saying is you must root it out before it destroys your whole congregation. For the Jew, leaven nearly always stood for evil influence. Instead of waiting for the issue to die down or go away, Paul attempted to confront the problem head on in hopes of shutting it down before it got worse. Verse 10 reads, I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Paul was confident that the Galatians would share his views. He also emphasized that nothing would exonerate the guilty one who led the sheep astray. Paul indicated that he would be judged by God and would suffer his due judgment. Third outline, renounce by faith. Verse 11 reads, Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Paul says that if he were no longer preaching the Lord Jesus, then no one would be persecuting him. Because Paul was teaching the truth, he was persecuted by both the Jews and the Judaizers. Key point number one, the cross marked the end of the law system and rendered circumcision and obedience to the Mosaic law unnecessary. Verse 12 reads, as for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Above circumcision, Paul stated that he wished all the troublemakers were just cut off, castrated, and thus removed from the presence of the faithful and no longer able to sow seeds or discouragement among believers. What he is saying is to castrate themselves. Paul is uttering a strong expression here. He wants the false teachers to leave them alone. Verse 13 reads, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Verse 14, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Paul is speaking about behavior within the Christian community behavior that should characterize how Christians treat each other. Paul does not treat love in this verse as just another human virtue, but rather as a fruit of the Spirit, something that is produced by God in the life of the believer. Key point number two, true Christian freedom means service, it means harmony and unselfish love. With this liberty in Christ, believers must seek to serve one another in love as Christ chose to love and not for fleshly gain. The practice of godly love for others involves renouncing selfish desires and embracing Christ. For the whole law or fulfilling the entirety of the law can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. Verse 15 reads, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Paul warned of the futility of sowing seeds of division and conflict. Such driving among believers only results in hurting and destroying one another. In summary, there are many voices speaking in the world around us. Satan is cunning and deceptive and his voice is dangerous and can be disguised as a reasonable spiritual truth. Don't let a false teacher or a confused believer 
rob you of the peace and freedom that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that Adam and Eve lost their freedom in the garden because they listened to the voice of the serpent. Know the word for yourself and don't let anyone convince you of anything that contradicts God's truth. Christians must diligently guard themselves against division and discord. It is easy to fall into the trap of competing and debating over differences in Christian practice and doctrine, worship format, uh, music, dress codes for worship, uh, special days, preaching styles, and other things that do not determine Christian faith or salvation. Our challenge as believers is to display the love of God in all matters, pointing people to Jesus Christ. In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.